Hi everyone. We're going to have a look at the last couple of bits now of Google Classroom. So I'm going to click on my Teaching English course and into the course. Now we've had a good look at the stream. We've had a look at the classwork and how you assign classwork. We haven't looked at the people, but this is literally the people in the course. So you can click on a plus sign here and invite teachers. You can click on the plus sign and invite students by email or you give them the code, the class code, which is minute there. But if I go back to my my classes and click on teaching English up there, there's the class code and that makes it huge so you can share it. OK, so people, there's only me in there at the moment, but that's where you'll see your lists of people. And then marks. There aren't any students at the moment. If my students were there and had handed in work, you would see their marks there. So it's a useful page, but not for a demonstration class. What is more interesting, though, is these settings over here. So you can change anything about your course here. The class name, I could change it. Class description, I could add it. The first section, module one, I could call overview or something like that. I could give it a room number. I can change the subject. The class codes there. This is probably the, the, the most important bit here in the general ones. So on the stream, students can post and comment. Now with adults, you'd expect people to be able to have sensible conversations and both post and comment on other people's posts. Students, if they're children, you may not want them posting. I'm sure you'd like them commenting, but do you want them posting totally and utterly spurious ideas, items, television programs, anything else? Naughty things, fun things. Think carefully about the age of your students and whether you want them to post and comment, whether you only want them to comment on your posts, or whether you only want to be able to post or comment as a teacher. So I assume for adults, most people will leave that where people can post and comment. And then showing classwork on the stream. Do you want to show everything, every attachment and every detail, or are you happy to show condensed notifications? Don't forget, if they go on to the classwork itself, the assignment area, they'll see everything in detail. So I think condensed notifications are there fine. Show deleted items, that's entirely up to you. If you want to show deleted items, switch it on. You can set an overall mark if you want to. And you can then obviously work out for your different tasks what the marks are. So if you've got, for example, 10 activities and they're worth 10 marks each, as your students get marked, they can see their total increasing towards the top mark. So I think that's a quick overview of, of what's left. Stream, classwork, people, marks, which we haven't got, and settings. So that's the basis of the tools offered in a Google Classroom. OK, good luck with it. A very useful resource if you are trying to teach and share work with your classes asynchronously. Bye for now.